All right, we are we are on now. And so for the record, we have uh, Chairman Lovett, Commissioner Gilliard, Commissioner Thrift, Commissioner Frazier, Commissioner Walden, uh, Jimmy Martin, and the Assistant County Administrator on. And we did notice a newspaper. Did we you, sent out a notice. Did you call Commissioner Stevens' name? Commissioner Stevens, I'm, I know I didn't, but you're here. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. We are we are live, and um, we did notice the newspaper. Um, and so, Mr. Chairman, you're in compliance with Georgia Open Meetings Act. All right, so well, let's get right to the business then. Uh, discussion of recreation and reopening plans. We did. We sent out uh, earlier, uh, I think really last week, last Friday, uh, sent you something uh, that had some tentative dates on it for our discussion. Uh, and Jimmy's on here, so I'll let Jimmy kind of talk that. We still, uh, I think our recommendation is that we still try to do it in three phases. Um, that is so we can ease into things from a couple of perspectives. One is monitoring uh, by the staff, and the other is giving us a little time to be able to get some signage up and to do some things we need to do. So, um, Jimmy, do you want to talk about what we talked about last week? Sure, Joey, thanks. Um, yeah, as, uh, you know, falling again in line with what's going on with a lot of other communities, uh, we're, we're hearing of our counterparts in other areas that are opening facilities, outdoor facilities, that is, uh, in line with what we had on phase one of our plan. And that included opening outdoor facilities like base, baseball fields, soccer fields, all ball fields, uh, basketball courts, tennis courts, skate park, and batting cages. Um, those areas are deemed sufficient with enough sufficient space to allow for uh, social distancing and other requirements that set forth by the CDC and the exe governor's executive orders. So, uh, as you and I discussed, Joey, um, in mentioning that we needed a little bit of time just to get the signage up and all, um, we felt like this weekend would be a good time to move forward with that, especially being Memorial Day weekend, you know, to to add something to the community and give them a few more opportunities to get out and enjoy some recreational facilities. So we feel like we could be ready to, to open those up by this weekend. We would continue to have our staff patrol and monitor the activities in the different parks. Uh, we have signage up that would indicate a limit in line with Governor Kemp's order of 10 persons per facility. Uh, that's what he was defined as a social social gathering was, was no more than 10. So that's what we had uh, planned to do was to make those facilities available for 10, no more than 10 at a time. Uh, we planned to also encourage a reservation system um, for people to reserve, let's say, batting cages for a limited amount of time, probably only like 30 minutes uh, for them to go in, just so that they would know when they got there that there was a facility available. You know, and if, if we have a lot of people showing up, then, you know, someone might be discouraged to get there and, you know, not have an opportunity to use the facility. And we also felt like that would be kind of a more orderly way to, to allow people to use them, too, if a, if a reservation system were in place. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of our plan, and um, just wanted to see if you guys would be in favor of that and, you know, let us know whether or not to move forward. And, Jimmy, if I could tag along this real quick, I know a concern the commissioners had last time, or at least what was discussed, was, you know, policing of the sites. Um, and, I, and I think it's fair to say that, that this is going to require some a lot of self-policing. Um, it's not the intent, as y'all were concerned about, for any recreation staff to uh, shut down anything or ask people to disband or, or, or be any really policemen. I think uh, we'd continue to do what we've been doing, and that is if, if we see – you know, something is, is that we might, you know, just, hey, now, you know, you guys uh, need to social distance a little bit and whatever, and just work with that. But as y'all pointed out, it would be a lot of, of uh, self-policing that would occur among those that were present, and we'd simply be there just to help facilitate. But certainly with the encouraging side of letting, letting things continue as they're continuing, you know, as long as nothing real terrible is happening. Um, we, we, again, I think the thought was we just we, we allow them to get back out and hopefully enjoy some fresh air and do some things. Uh, and, and then um, uh, let me take one step further, maybe not to phase three, but in phase two, actually what we looked at too, I don't have that sheet in front of me, Jimmy, you have to help me with the date, was then if we, were, if we could do this this week, um, 
we would go ahead this week and start trying to advertise for some lifeguard positions. We've held off not knowing whether we were going to do it or not. Uh, the lifeguards are in short supply, but we'd like to go ahead and advertise for those and shoot for a pool opening um, in the first part of uh, June, if that would be okay. And that would give us some time. Obviously there too, we got to do some signage. Uh, part of our proposal there is we would limit probably occupancy to 50% of the normal load to start out um, and still practice some distancing or try to, especially on the pool decks. And we realize how that goes too uh, with families. And again, that'd be a lot of self-policing. So I guess as you think about it, uh, we were kind of looking for maybe um, with these suggestions and some modifications or something to to be able to start on Memorial with phase one and then go ahead and get the green light to start working on phase two also. Jerry and Jim, how would that uh, apply to a, like a pickup basketball game? That's a good question, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that there are some individuals on the board that, that really understand basketball, and I'm sure everybody does to some extent, but, you know, you really can't play basketball and maintain social distancing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that we would either have to ask people to refrain from scrimmaging, so to speak, uh, and only shoot, you know, like C C Commissioner Frazier said, play horse, maybe. Um, there would be limited options if we if we prevented that. But um, I think in other, the other activities that we're talking about, I think you could maintain, but particularly in basketball, it would be really tough. It would, it, even if you say only 10 on the court at one time, you know. So what does everybody have to stay in their cars or stay yeah. side lines or self distance? That, that's going to be tough. That's going to be yeah. tough. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not against it, but I'm just brainstorming on how would you manage it. Not, you know. Well, again, it would require, you know, particularly with those that may be waiting to use the courts, Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, they're going to have to police themselves to some extent as far as maintaining social distancing. Obviously, if our if our staff see it, see them and feel like there's a problem, they would suggest to them that they should, you know, uh, disperse somewhat to, to meet those requirements. Uh, but again, you know, I, I think we all don't want to get in a position of our staff trying to have to enforce those things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Of all of them, you know, the, unfortunately, the basketball courts are some of the most popular, but they're also going to be the most difficult to to, to meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a tough one. Yes, sir, it is. That's Thank you tough. very much. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, somewhere lost my phone. I pulled him in. Jimmy, but you know, we were we were talking about this signage a couple of weeks ago, and that's going to be one of the big deals. Is you know we're just going to have to put social distance is required, and um, because we all know that that's not going to happen. Uh, you can have the signs up, and um, regardless, it's it's just not going to happen. I can tell you, I had a fast weekend trip and there was social distancing on 175 passengers on jet and they just had it at 50% capacity and everybody wanted to get, you know, where they wanted to get. So, and they're adults. <clears throat> you know, when you got, when you got children that's in Regency Park and, and they want to come across the fence, um, you know, you're just going to have to have some signage that says parental supervision and you're going to have to have signage at these other places and and at least we've done all we can possibly do other than shut it down and I'm just like the rest of the board I think people have um, their feet grown to the carpet they're ready to get outside yeah mr. chairman I'd like to also share just you know to give you some some points on the signage that we do plan to put up at each facility you know, basically saying that it's open pursuant to the orders from the, from the governor of Georgia. Uh, not more than 10 individuals may gather there. Must observe social distancing rules. It spells out six feet apart. Uh, not applying to cohabitating persons, family units, or roommates. Uh, also noting that the facility may be reserved for a limited amount of time and how to make the reservation. 
also that if the facility is full, those designed to wait their turn must observe social distancing rules, kind of referring back to what you mentioned a minute ago for those who are waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, failure to follow the rules may result in closure of the facility to try and, you know, encourage okay. folks to, to follow the rules so that we can make it available for them. Okay, trying to put some teeth into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, hey, um, Jimmy and uh, Joey, I I was just I'm on my way back from our uh, way cross, but I I was thinking I'm just sitting here thinking about um, a playground, you know, with a basketball court like the one over there uh, where I grew up. You, you got a you got a fenced in playground with the swing set, and you, you know you you could limit that to let's say five children with distances. Uh, of course, that, that that's that's going to be tough. And then basketball, you can put, um, you know, you can limit the number of people that can play basketball. But, but if they do, it's going to have to be uh, stationary basketball where you can have a free throw contest or, as, you know, Commissioner Frazier said, you play horse or, or, or something like that. But you, you, you can't, um, you couldn't rebound. You, you, um, you, you know, so how, how, how do you even – play basketball if, if you got to keep a distance like that. Right? How, do, how do kids, you know, toddlers and um, nine and 10-year-olds get on the on the swing set, you know, the sliding board, the monkey bar, the, the hobby horse? How, how do they do that in a, in a fenced-in area? Um, and I, I know we want them to get out, and we, we're trying to reopen. But I, I just don't see how you can do that. Um, and, and, out of playground. That, that's just my thought. That, that's a good point, Commissioner Gillard. And, and I would note now that playgrounds are not included in this phase one. Um, recommendations from the CDC are that playgrounds not be reopened yet because the inability to keep kids social distancing and also the sharing of equipment. Right. So it would not. The playgrounds would not be included in phase one. And totally agree with your your view on the basketball. Very difficult to do much other than maybe one rebounding and one shooting, you know, and then changing out. Uh, I don't see but, how. But, to but, but 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 even doing that, you got to share the same basketball. Right, right. That's exactly absolutely right. Yeah. And, and see, uh, and I guess that that's that's what I was saying at the last meeting. You know, I mean, I can only think of possibly one sport uh, that you can possibly have social distancing and what is that baseball yes correct <laughs> i mean it, but, but you know well, still but, sharing, but, sharing but, the baseball. Uh, justin even if it, if it was basketball and if, if say if me and you were playing basketball i i, I could keep the ball away from you so that that, that wouldn't be an issue <laughs> <laughs> see, absolutely absolutely so i, I don't i, I don't the trophy. You know, <laughs> duly noted duly noted Mission to the cup. <laughs> but Jimmy, how would you, even if a pickup basketball game, so the, the, the sanitation thing doesn't apply, somebody got to come clean and reaches between games. I mean, how, how far does this thing go? How, how, you know, the only thing we could possibly do, with, you know, commonly used surfaces, mm -hmm. like perhaps a water fountain, you know, um, where you're, you push the press the button on the water fountain. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, on the basketball course, you really don't have anything. Like yeah. Mr. Miller said, you can't clean the ball between each touch, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah. I don't really – there's just not much you can do with basketball. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think even um, in the next phase, uh, you know, I, I'm just thinking – just thinking about playgrounds, regardless of what phase – that's in. I, I just don't see that, um, you know, being being feasible. Basketball, and then if you're talking about kids going out there on the swing set, I mean, you know, we I got a, a swing set um, um, I bought for my grandkids, and, but it's just two of them, and um, you know, and the neighbors uh, used to send their kids over there, but you know, they, they can't do it now. And even with that. Um, my wife is around there with a spray bottle and some sanitizer, just wiping, wiping, wiping. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it's a move in the right direction, but it's very limiting. <clears throat> That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I that, like the, that, the one, the, Mr. Chairman, I like the, uh, he said he had signs. You got those signs ready to go up today or whenever this is approved? Um, but, or you got to lay down those to get, I know you got them, you got the some of the closed um, signs out there in Gum Branch, but do you have those you were just speaking about? Uh, no, ma'am, we would have to begin, I think, um, with a, with a computer printed sign laminated um, mm -hmm. and posted there like we did with the initial closures uh, and mm -hmm. then if we wanted to go to a more permanent sign we would then have to go to a, a company like Rapid Signs or Express Signs or someone like that to get mm -hmm. some some make kind of like you know uh, political signs that you see in folks yard. Right. The code, uh, okay. Corrugated I believe they are. Yes, but the, it, you know if, nothing, if we don't open up the playground, I mean, at Gun Branch, I don't know where else, but the playground, they're not there. But they are, you know, like this weekend, they, there was maybe six people, like a little family was just having a picnic there at the table, you know. And I don't know if that was not a, a good thing to do, but they were the only one there. It's not being used that much. Um, and that was I have okay. seen some out there playing basketball, you know, but uh, it is what it is. But... Uh, I don't know of anything else we could do at any of the, the other parks per the current other than the walking trail. Per the current rules, that would have been okay with this, you know, the folks at the picnic table. Um, uh -huh. Passive use of the green space was okay. Um, okay. It was just the, you know, active activities basically going on other than walking. Um, so the, the passive mm -hmm. use and walking was okay. Um, we've been trying to keep them off the basketball courts and the ball fields, mm -hmm. you know, primarily, and the playground. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think out my way they, they've uh, been doing that. Other than every once in a while they'll be playing basketball. But uh, they, have to be good they all seem to ride the same car up there. Yeah, they have to. <laughs> they, have to they, they must be good basketball players. They have to jump that six-foot fence to get in there to play. Well, <laughs> well, they were in there somehow. <laughs> Jimmy, what would the uh, Jimmy Joe? What would the wording on the sign? Have y'all got that together? What would that wording say? Um, Commissioner, I mean, Sir, Chair, Mr. Chairman, here. This is exactly what we have. I have written up to to planning to use. This facility is open pursuant to the rules set forth by executive order from the governor of Georgia, which include the following: Not more than ten individuals may gather at this facility at one time. Number two, users must observe social distancing rules and maintain at least six feet of distance between themselves and any other person at all times. This provision shall not apply to cohabitating persons, family units, or roommates residing together. Note that this facility or portions thereof may be reserved for exclusive use for a limited amount of time. To make a reservation, call the LCRD office at 876-5359, not more than one week in advance. Otherwise, use is on a first-come basis. If the facility is full, those desiring to wait their turn must observe social distancing rules. And the last thing is, failure to follow the rules may result in closure of the facility. Okay. Uh, Jimmy. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, we, um, and, and um, I, I, li I like the way that's worded, except that, um, you, you know, we talk about uh, sanitizing and hand washing. I mean, I, I, there's no way you can put that on there unless you're going to provide that. I mean, I so do we put something? Do we put something on there? Tell them that um, that um, you know that, that they're responsible uh, for like that because I mean, distancing yeah. is you know that that's one of the universal precautions, but so is sanitizing. So how do you um, how do you tell someone to wash their hands if you're not providing a hand wash facility or you, you know or, or, or do we even um, take it to that you know to that point? That's a great point, Commissioner Gillard. Um, it's not on there for the reason that we don't know how we could provide it. Right. Right. But I, I agree with you that it is it would be you know it, it certainly is something that would be 
good to have. Yeah, I mean, you're out there at the public works office here in Hinesville. Um, we, we, when we have our meetings, and we, we meet with these guys every morning and their supervisors, then I meet with them every, uh, as a group um, every two weeks to re- reiterate what they've been told every day. But we were telling them about um, at the field island, um, you know, to make sure that they wash their hands after handling the, the nozzle on the gas pump. Well, um, we put, we got uh, sanitizer and soap out there on top of the fuel pump. So, you know, to tell them to, to wash their hands is one thing, but to provide them a means to wash their hands is, 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 um, is what we're doing. So we're telling them to do it, and we're giving them the supplies to do it. I, but that, how, how do you do that um, at a public facility? Um, I, I can see now, you know, you, you put kids out there on um, – <laughs> with, with some kind of dispenser, uh, that would be uh, five minutes later you have to replenish it. <laughs> yes, sir, I agree. And, and then, too, if you were only talking about really one court, that might be manageable, but we're talking about six or eight different locations throughout the county where you would need to do that. Right, yeah. What well, is my, my need to the week is uh, that we could keep the basketball court's closed for a while longer. That's if true. there's no way that we are, we are going to be able to handle. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I mean, and, and I agree with that. But, you, you know, when Jimmy was reading the sign, you know, when we talk about the universal yeah. precautions, you, you know, we, we, we're telling them distancing. Well, you, you know, that, that's that's what we wanted to do, keep six feet apart. But Right. There are more. That's not the only universal precaution. Yeah, that's correct. Sanitize, right. Sanitizing is so. If you're telling them that, uh, are you saying if you don't post it that it's okay to not wash your hands? And, and we know we're not saying that, but by not um, enumerating that on the on the sign, it, I, you know. So I, I don't know. It, it's just it's just tough to try to. To, to try to co- cover everything, but um, yeah. but ever since it's a public facility, are we um, expected to or, or, or liable if we don't cover everything? So I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, your bathroom is open anyway, are there? <clears throat> yes, sir. They are. And this is I'm like I'm like Commissioner Gill. I know I've been to some sometimes. There's not soap in there to be found. Um, <laughs> but but is it is our intent to try to? Provide the soap for, the, for all the bathrooms? Uh, yes, sir. It, it, as fast as it disappears, we try to replace it. And yeah, hey, and, uh, and, and, and Jimmy, you, you put paint, paper towels and, and toilet paper in there. I, 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 can imagine how long that's, I can imagine how long that's going to last in there. It's under, it's under lock and key in there, but um, some will yeah. just blow it off the stool and take it with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I regardless, know. Those, those are things that we deal with. But yes, sir, the intent is definitely to have soap available. Okay. And just do the best you yeah. can. Yeah. I hate to penalize the, the good guys for what the bad guys doing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. And I would say right. to you this: our our staff has been doing a great job of patrolling the parks and checking those restrooms. And you know, everyone that I've seen has, has been in great condition. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes uh, it's minus some of the uh, supplies we you put in there, but you know, they've been restocking it as quickly as I could. Yeah, hey, but if you, if you see my brother Ricky, tell him not to do any policing because I, I can't help him fight. He has to call Mookie. He lives in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, he, he's, he is a diplomat, Mr. Mr. Gillard. Uh, uh, okay, okay, good. good. All right. You're working okay, out. Good, good. All right, good, good. good. Uh, well, let's, let's let that be the right. standard, and we just try to keep those places stocked as well as we can. Um, well, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, but but the only thing around the basketball facility, I, I know the one uh, at our main location in Hinesville, uh, where, where's the, the closest bathroom? Right there, right at the pavilion. You know, at sir, the it's actually it's at the concession stand in the middle of the baseball fields. Right. That, that's 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 what I was saying. I, I do know that that they do have uh, portable washing stations. That you know we might could put closer because because what I'm saying is I really truly don't feel that that people are really going to go walk you know that far to go wash their hands and then come back because e- even if they do that and then they touch something their hands are 
still has the possibility to terminate it again. Uh, Justin, you, you talking about the one? You talking about the one right there by Popeyes right there? Yes, sir. That's correct. Oh, okay. And, 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 yeah. and, and really, that, that's that's the one that's used most frequently. And uh, yeah. Commissioner uh, and Gillick, I, I don't know uh, the one in Rebecca Street. Is is there a watching station over there? No, uh, uh-uh. no, there, there's um. That's but that, that's a city uh, playground. I mean, you know, right. the, the, right. the county does a good job of helping it. But but no, that there's no uh, that we, we got a water fountain there, and, and that's it. Um, there, there's no bathroom facility, no no nothing like that over there. Um, right. Charles Frazier, right. Charles Frazier may let him use the bathroom over there, but um, I, I don't know under right. these these circumstances. And, and see, and, and and that's what I was getting at. Uh, you know, the average citizen doesn't know the difference between a county-wide, I mean, county-ran, you know, right, facility right. and a city-wide uh, facility. So I also suggest whatever we decide to do, that, that we stay uniform like we have been, you know, through this whole pandemic with, with the city of Hinesville. But then also, before I, before I end, I'm concerned about over-policing. You know, I understand having signs and everything, but me as a business owner, I promise you, I have more signs on my window that I don't even have to tint my windows anymore. And I've seen time after time where people walk in and don't read anything that, that I've posted on my window. So I, I, I hear the signs, but I truly I don't know how effective the, the signs are going to be. And and then I'm looking at our numbers here, and I know our numbers still haven't went up, but I know I asked this question before, uh, and I know we've increased the testing, but I see our numbers at, at like 45 or 46. But, I mean, how many people have been tested? So we could kind of, you know, have some type of scale. Um, is, is it still the right thing for us to do to even open it up? That, that's, I, I'm, I'm still back on, on that portion. But yeah. that's just me. Well, and, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll like to add, uh, Justin, when you, you know, about the signs. And, and I agree with that. No, no one reads them. Uh, like the guy that just passed me out here on 84, um, <laughs> the ceiling was 40, 45. I know he had to, he had to be doing he had to be doing 70. You, 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 you know, but uh, the, um, and, you, you know, same, same with same with same with stop signs. But I, the reason I'm saying that is that um, I think for liability reasons, you you have to oh, have yeah. them there. Yeah, absolutely. But, I, yeah. I understand from from the the liability standpoint, uh, but I'm looking at the effectiveness standpoint as well yeah 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 i i really don't know how i i, I don't know i know yeah. there's some other business owners on, on on the line i know some you know people who, who work in particular fields where you know it's it's a uh, higher traffic count and i know everyone has seen signs but i mean do people really read the signs but again if we have 45 <laughs> cases here and we've only had 60 people tested then i don't think we should open up period but if, if we have 45 cases, but we had 2,000 people or 3,000 people tested, then that's a whole different ballgame. So I think, me personally, I think we still need to figure out how many people have been tested. And and, and to me, I, I don't understand how that information isn't privy to anyone because I, I don't know. I can tell you I know how many people come in my barbershop every day. Simple. That, that's simple math. So. Well, just to, just to think that this is a, a phased in, very slow opening. I, I think the people kind of, well, not kind. I know a lot of them are looking forward to some kind of um, uh, what's the word, relaxation. You know, absolutely. Uh, I'm to get out a little bit, but this is not going overboard by the, you know, by any means. You can very well tell. Uh, and, and I agree with you. The signs. I work in a sign place too, but you know, there there are some folks that do read the fine print. <laughs> you know. Uh, and whether it be for liability or just for the human good, I think we have to post the signs, <clears throat> and um, maybe it'll, it'll help somebody. But for those people that need to get out and do a little something, this kind of it kind of it gives them hope <laughs> that we that we headed back to some. Whether uh, everybody says a new norm, whatever the new norm is. Yeah. And, and yeah. Mr. Chair, yeah. I'm 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 a hundred I'm a hundred percent behind that. But mm-hmm. the only thing I'm saying is, do we really know where we are? You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I mean, and, and if, because and if, first of all, we're, we really can't police it. I mean, just like what the sign was saying, or unless you are a family member or or a roommate, hey, I, I could say I have five roommates. 
or six <clears> teammates. <throat> or hey, I, I just trust me. I, I'm, I'm born and raised in Liberty County. I have family on from the east side to the west side in Hinesville. But I meet a new cousin every day. So even from the standpoint as a family member, I mean, how, how do you how do you even verify that? So the only thing I'm saying is I understand it from the liability side, but from the effectiveness side, I, I, I think it's a, a moot point. That's just my opinion. You know, I saw a police officer a little while ago on TV. He was – it was a party that they had to break up. I forgot what part of the country. And he said, guys, we can be there as much as we can in our blue – but at the end of the day, people got to help police themselves. He said, no, we can't be with them 24-7. So I, I hear what you're saying. I agree wholeheartedly. But we can't be with these folks 24-7. I mean, we can't give them lie detector tests. You know? uh, they got to take some responsibility themselves for what's going on in, in the world, not just in Hinesville, Liberty County, in the world. Uh, we just yeah. got to do the best we can. So they can't say we just didn't take a, a, a nonchalant uh, 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 back of attitude to we're doing as much as we can do as commissioners to show leadership in our area and then, then it, well, what they do beyond that they have to take some responsibility for it but but we need to be able to sleep at night we've done our best on our side to, you know um, to make them aware and, and I just don't want Liberty County to be a hot spot I, I tell you that that's, uh, that that bothers me that that bothers me that bothers me now I, I hear you very well we don't know where it is, who it is. Uh, someone could come in here from somewhere. But uh, let's do all that we can to try to keep us out of that hot spot situation. Hey, Commissioner, or Mr. Chairman, if I could add, you know, we're not strongly advocating doing this. We're just offering it as a proposal, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. and let, let the powers that be decide, you know, what they think is best. So I don't want to, you know, infer that, that we're saying, yeah, we need to do this. It's yeah. simply a plan that we could follow to re start reopening facilities. Mm -hmm. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, Jimmy and I had talked about this, and, of course, I mentioned it to uh, the Commissioner Gillard because Ricky had brought it to my attention that already the, the uh, playground areas, ball courses, controlled, if you want to call it that way, by the Board of Education, people are already using those. I mean, they're using them. There's no signs or anything. Up. They go get everything they want to. But, you know, I, the signage was, I mean, I don't mind telling you it was my idea. And I, and it, if you can buy into it or you can't, but I just felt like the easiest thing for us to do is to go ahead and put something out here. And, and if the Board wants it, that's fine. I mean, it, I'm just like Jimmy. I, I'm not a. Uh, I don't play basketball. I'm not as as limber as I used to be. But I'm just saying that if we wanted to do something to to try to say, you know, we're interested in quality of life, what you're talking about, people getting out, mm -hmm. and, and even having the you know little picnic birthday party out at, in some branch. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't have to do this. Uh, you know, the signage is important, though. I think just for more than anything is, hey, we we did something. We told them these are the things you need to follow. Um, and, and even to the point that there's going to have to be parental supervision uh, on some of these places. And um, and that's the only other thing. Um, Jimmy, he's doing a good job right now. I think he's got his cart loaded, but. You know, if we wanted to try to do something, we can. And if we don't, all we got to do is make a decision to hold off 30 more days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jimmy, does your sign say the parental supervision is requested or suggested or anything like that? No, sir, it does not. Um, yeah. You know, it, it may be that <laughs> on this particular, we may need to add another sign to that. Because this one's pretty full right now. Yeah, this uh, is okay. Yeah. But, you know, we're talking about a letter-sized sheet of paper initially anyway. That's so, yeah. you know, it wouldn't be difficult to have, you know, more than one for that mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a very good point. Um, a lot of kids use these facilities, and, you know, they, they'll be there running around, as kids always do. And, um, you know, they'll probably end up on the playground, which they're not supposed to be. Um, so... Um, I, I certainly wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm not 
I'm kind of like Commissioner Frazier. That that part especially, I don't know how effective it would be because most parents would drop their kids off without even looking at signs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the signage is important for other reasons, too. You know, when our staff has to go there and say, hey, you know, there's not supposed to be more than 10 people here on this facility. Yeah, you know, so if there's not a sign there, then, of course, people are going to fall back on the wall. I didn't know that. Nobody told me that. Yeah. But you have the sign there, you can say, well, it's right there on the sign. You walk right by it when you came on the field. So it's always good to have that to fall back on in, in the signage department. Okay. For sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, could I add one other thing, too, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, we, we may have to go to Plan B if, 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 if individuals do not follow the rules and – you know, putting on here failure to follow the rules may result in closure of the facility. Um, there are some other measures we could take. Um, you know, we had employed security at all of our ball games uh, in the past, uh, leading up to when we had to stop, actually. And, um, you know, those individuals were brought on to on as staff members, as part-time staff members. They're still available. Um, you know, if we wanted to have more of a presence there to enforce the rules, and we could turn to that measure of having having actually um, off-duty officers there to to help maintain uh, the requirements as a plan B. I'm suggesting not plan A. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd rather save those tax dollars if we can, but but you're right. If we see that plan A is not working, you know, then we can certainly. Uh, no resort to that as plan B. And we're all in this together. We're all in this together, I mean, to conclude this. Yeah, would be, we just close it back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I think I like that better. Yeah. I think I like that better. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to have the security there. What? How many hours a day? And I would think it would be just, you know, some of our high-use areas, you know, <clears throat> like the basketball courts here in town. Mm -hmm. um, like like Commissioner Frazier said, they're, they're a very high-use area, um, you know, more located in proximity to a lot of neighborhoods, so you could have a lot more kids up there, you know, hanging around. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would, My thing would be only mainly in high-use areas, probably okay. maybe – Maybe only here at LIT Park. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, commissioners, is the consensus that we do this um, soft reopening? Yeah, I, I, I think we need. We, I think we need to give it a shot. I mean, you know, it's um, you know we, we we're trying to provide something. Um, and um, it, it, it's, it's not it's not going to be perfect, and you know we could we could roll this out and see how it, you know see how it plays out, and um, you know we can always go back in and uh, say well, you know because we got that disclaimer, so if you would to say that you know if you don't comply that you know we'll shut it down, and um, so you know hopefully they will, and, and, and you know and, and we have to. We have to take into consideration too that um, no matter <laughs> what we put on the signs and, and how much of an opening we do, you, you're gonna have, and, and I'll, I'll say the majority of the people um, ain't gonna send their kids out there. Be true. I mean, I, I, I would like to say that's the majority. I mean, the overwhelming majority. Um, mm -hmm. I know, um, I know my, my grandkids ain't going. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I don't think it'll be bombarded by large numbers. Here. No, no. I, I don't. I don't think they're gonna be lined up like Black Friday out there. Uh, uh, uh. Did we put that in form of a motion, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adhere to the plan presented by Mr. Martin. Yeah, I second that. Motion. Is that Commissioner Stevens? Is that you? Commissioner Stevens, I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Yes, uh, discussion. Yes, sir. Go through a list of what all will actually officially be open out there. 
Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. That would include the basketball, outdoor basketball courts, all the outdoor sports facilities, ball fields, uh, um, batting cages, tennis courts, and skate park. And and the walking trail. Yes, sir. Walking trails continue to be open as they have been. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Just, just, just another question. Yes, uh, I, I don't. I don't know if, if we kind of solidify uh, what we were talking about about the hand washing stations. I mean, I mean, are, are, are we going to have facilities where? I mean, because again, we can't tell them to you know wash their hands and we don't provide that service for them. Hey, man, no, all of our parks have the restroom facilities, don't they? Uh, yes, sir, they do. Yeah, okay. And they're going to try to keep them stocked, uh, Commissioner Frazier, with the hand-washing supplies. Well, I, I think what um, Chairman and uh, Jim Justin was talking about, the one um, right there by Popeye's, I mean, the the, the bathroom is all yeah. the way down by the by Long Bell Stadium down there. Well, Jimmy, how about the bathroom right there by the, uh, um, uh, at the pavilion? But, but no, normally that pavilion is is rented out or, or closed. And, uh, yeah. From my it, 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 uh, right, and, and we still have those pavilions closed to rent. Correct. Yes, sir. So you can't get in there to wash your hands right there? Well, we, we could make it available. Or another option would be to set up a, a table with, with some – um, hand sanitizing stuff right there at that table. Like Mr. Giller said, you always had the possibility of, you know, kids or some people kind of, you know, messing with that a little bit. But I mean, you would think there would be enough in, uh, adults around to kind of keep that at a minimum. Hey, Jimmy, Mr. That, Martin. That, go, go ahead, go ahead, Justin. I mean, Mr. Martin, with all due respect, Hand sanitizer costs more than gold right now. <laughs> I can tell you now. We true. put hand sanitizer out there, it's going to be gone. True. But, Good point. But, I, but, but they do have those, I, I don't know the cost, but they do have those portable hand washing stations where uh, it's like a foot pump. All we have to do is fill it up with water, and it's a foot pump, and it has it has a paper towel uh, dispenser on it, the soap dispenser. And it's a foot pump. You, you press it a couple of times, water comes out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing out a couple of ideas. But I, well, I, I, I know uh, the hand sanitizer is not going to work. Justin, I, um, in, in a case like that with the foot pump, where, where does the wastewater go? On the ground? No, it, it goes in a, a, a separate uh, uh, portion of it. Uh, and actually, uh, we have one at my, at my job. I think you open the bathrooms right there. Yeah. Or open up yeah, the opening bathroom. the bathrooms is a good option for me, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Chair. Yeah. Right, that's fine. That's right I'm there. Just saying, I mean, it, 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 it has to be something <laughs> closer to the end. Yeah. And then walking all the way to the football field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, open the bathrooms right there. Yeah. All yeah. right, any other discussion? Yeah, uh, I, I'm glad uh, Commissioner Frazier brought it up because I'm not going to open my mailbox up in the morning. <laughs> All in favor of the motion that was let it be known by roll call. Chairman Lovett, I vote yes. Marion Stevens, vote yes. Yeah. Mr. Fraser, uh, I vote yes. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Thrill. And Commissioner Walden. Ah. Uh, All right. I think that's it, right? Uh, that, yeah. Uh, Gillis. Yeah. 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 And, uh, um, you made the motion. Commissioner, Commissioner Gillis, I vote. I vote yes. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Motion passes. We'll start the soft. And you want to do this for this weekend, right? Yes, sir. That's that's what we propose. Okay. All right. All right. A gift to the citizens. This is, you need to use it wisely. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Appreciate your work, sir, with that. Thank you very much, all of you. Keep us posted if you will, please, sir. Yes, sir, I will. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, um, could we also, would you let Jimmy and I go ahead and um, uh, move towards, uh, and Jimmy, you've got that sheet in front of you. It's either, I believe it's June 8th that we were talking about trying to open pools. It provided we get the lifeguards lined up. Um, can, can we go ahead and at least advertise for those jobs with, with that intent and just see what we get on the job offer market? and at least have a, um, a range there for trying to open those pools? I don't see anything wrong with that, sir. Yeah. I ever... agree with that. Okay. And, and um, I think Jimmy mentioned, too, uh, that um, at one point we were talking that, you know, we'll have to see how many lifeguards we get. Depending on that, uh, we want to do our best to give both pools the same hours that they normally get. But it could be that um, we have to split lifeguards. Uh, so, you know, one thing limiting 50% occupancy will help us with the number we need. But the other side is, you know, I just want you to know that we'll come back to you to let you know how that's going um, at your regular meeting, as a matter of fact. And if we see any modification of temporary modification of hours, it's going to be necessary. But we'll go ahead and move in that direction with the intent of being wide open as usual. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Early voting. Yes, sir. I just want to give you a quick update. We were there early this morning uh, to get set up and to do and to do the COVID. We did the COVID training to all the poll workers in here Friday afternoon, Friday morning. Uh, so uh, we split up, and some of us went to do temps this morning and all that. We had one, we had one worker uh, that had to be uh, uh, filled in for. Uh, that had some signs of illness, not necessarily COVID, um, but was running a fever, so that was pulled out. Uh, but everything's running pretty smoothly. Uh, I will tell you, and what Jimmy was talking about when we first got on the phone, is that uh, we went into the polls this morning in Midway, and the air conditioner was completely out. Um, the air conditioner was working fine Friday, uh, and so over the weekend, it, it breathed its last breath. So um, uh, it, it's, it's been uncomfortable down there today, but... Uh, Jimmy and uh, Jerry and I spoke this morning. Uh, Jimmy was able to um, get some temporary air units, much like we used in the tax commissioner's office some years ago, and those are uh, due to be put in this afternoon. So we had to um, we had to rent those. We rented them for two weeks uh, at that facility. So by in the morning, they should be be plenty plenty cool uh, in that facility. A little bit extra challenge with air not circulating and wearing the PPEs. But we were, we were able to get fans in there uh, to make it the best that we could. So, um, but uh, Jimmy, unless you've got something else there, I mean that's pretty much pretty much it. Everything else, uh, the ballot box was installed today. Um, I, I will tell you there was a uh, rule put out uh, today by the Secretary of State that dealt with the counting of absentee ballots that does allow those to uh, come in and be opened early but they can't be counted until the polls close um there's no, no tallies can be done until the polls close they could they could become in and be counted but not tally uh, that kind of came from an issue of the secretary of state doing some things a little bit different this time in putting a privacy sleeve instead of a privacy envelope in there so that order that came from the secretary of state today by emergency meeting of the elections commission uh, was was a little bit detailed on that, but um, that that is allowed to be happening. Otherwise, we're up and running. We continue to monitor those people every day and do those checks early in the morning before they open. Uh, Joey, yes, now you, you said that they they can tally but not count. They that, no, sir. I, I I said that incorrectly in the beginning. They can actually, if they choose to, there's a specific method they have to use to extract the ballots from the box and extract the ballots from the envelopes. If they choose to do that and go through that procedure, they can actually start scanning them into the system, the local system early, but they can't produce any vote counts or tallies until after the poll closes. That's correct. After the, po after the poll closes on election night, uh, June 8th, June 9th? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. With, with the, and, oh, wow. and that's not that's not that much different, but it says that, that you know it just reaffirms they can go ahead and be scanning them in if they want to um, before that time. But Joey, Joey, uh, wouldn't that be the board's decision, uh, not Ella's decision? 
Well, you know, it, pretty much. It says the election superintendent, but it, in this case, it would be the board's decision to start doing that, okay. I would think, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, at least I'm glad it's the board's decision, not hers. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so, that's it. Joey, are you attending that meeting today? Uh, well, I was actually, I, I went to uh, Midway this morning to do the uh, the screenings. I'll be back there in the morning early. Oh, you, you're an employee? <laughs> yeah, I, all the time. Yes, sir. I'm good. Well, I don't know if I'm good. I'm, I'm good for what you need me to try to do, at least. Well, are they I'm short? Planning on, I'm planning on dropping in that meeting this afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Still, people still asking me about absentee ballots. They hadn't received them yet. That's why I asked that question. Well, let me let me say this too, and I, and y'all probably know this, but for some of us that haven't voted absentee, we had a couple of instances that came up this morning of some folks that said, you know what, I've decided against absentee uh, ballot voting. I'd like to just come early vote, and that is permissible. You bring your absentee ballot with you, and you basically bring a form of ID that's allowed, and you sign an affidavit of release, and then you're allowed to early vote. Okay. And, and Joey, if, if and if you didn't apply for an absentee ballot, you could just go down there for early voting like you normally do, right? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other the other thing, and I know I apologize for not having it on here, is that um, I got an email uh, just a little while ago, in fact, from Kenny Howard, that they are planning. I think he said, and let me uh, look back on that real quickly. But I, th I think he said that they were trying to reopen uh, city offices the first part of June and kind of wanted to know what we wanted to do. Um, I think what I'd like to do, there's some things, again, Jerry's rushing around now with a lot of things too, like Jimmy is. We need some time to get some things in place. Um, we are have ordered some social bearing or barrier type things. We're, we're doing some markings on the floor. Jerry's still got some more of that to do in between elections. Um, and uh, we're, we're making some rearrangements in some offices so that it limits the staff or limits the people that can come into those small lobby areas. Additionally, when Jerry frees up sometime in the next couple of days, he and I have talked about uh, using plexiglass placement um, which is just going to hang from the ceilings, basically, at some of our counter locations. So um, I'd almost like to be able to put you together, almost like we did with the recreation plan, put you together something, Joseph and I, this week on, um, on a reopening. Uh, the Justice Center is reopened to limited traffic right now, both through appointments but also to walk-in. So we're, we're, we're getting to that point where people are, are talking about wanting to get back into buildings and do some things, but obviously under much different situations than when we closed. So if it's okay, I'll be making some notes, sending those to y'all uh, that we could possibly look maybe the second week in June or something about trying to reopen if we can get everything in place. Joey, I'm I, I just, um, and, and, and you're right, um, Kenny, um, Mr. Howard from the city, we, we did have to put together a, a transition plan and how, how that public works um, b because all of our services that we provide are outside the gate. Um, we, we're, we're not going to open. It. I, I mean, you, you know, uh, yes, yeah, you got people that would, they want to come out there and look me in the face and tell me that I didn't pick up their doggone trash, but they can call <laughs> <laughs> they could call and tell me that I didn't pick up their trash. And, and, and we're going to pick it up just as fast whether they look at me or whether they call me. You, you know, so there's no sense in the services that we provide for anybody to come out there. Now, that's a little different, but I was just thinking about Clinton. I mean, does does anybody have to go to the road department, for, for an example? And, and um, um, then we look at um, yesterday, I think, was about um, – maybe two months since we um, shut things down. And I, I, I don't know what people have been doing for the two months, but if we open up and um, we put all kind of barricades and plexiglass and everything, what are they coming from for now that they didn't get for the last two months? Right, I understand completely. I, I, di I just know we got to, you know, at some point open back up offices. I mean, I, I think ours, and I, again, I'll put it in the plan without tying you up too long this afternoon, but I, you know, ours will be encouraging still appointments to be made right now, uh, encouraging those folks to call. But if there is somebody that needs to come up, 
for instance, not everybody has access to a computer to submit job applications. We do get walk-ins for those, um, and we're changing the way that works already, proposed to. Um, but just, you know, some services like that. And, and we yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And, and, I, and I'm saying that everybody don't have a computer to, uh, to apply for a job. But I tell you, if, if I was unemployed and I know that it took a computer, I'll find somebody that had one, but that, that's just me. <laughs> Be a thing to do. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, kind of like if, if you want to walk with you, I think I suggest you go to Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right, but well, just just let just let the city know we're working toward it. And, and, and uh, y'all, we're gonna try to do our our June second meeting in house. That's our plan right now. Joe, that's still looking. Probable. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Stanley's in here now, and um, uh, I would propose to you, if it's okay with the board, that we pretty much uh, start back up like we finished, and that is we limit public access only to those people that have something on the agenda. Uh, we can, you know, if, if those, we can either do it by allowing them to come in the building, uh, like I know we've got a couple of public hearings that are proposed, you know, or we can set it up under a Facebook Live and have them come in and ask questions on the Facebook Live or on the Zoom. But I think if they don't, we probably have to offer them access. I think we, we, we'll, we, uh, Clint and I'll work through that, but yes, sir, it's, it's very positive. We'll space in here and um, and, and then y'all can figure out how you want to separate, you know, commission, but we'll have you a space set up to work. Okay, all right. All right, looking forward to that. <clears throat> Anything else for the good order? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking about the first of June. Let's, let's talk about our, our little thing. What, what are we going to do on our meeting? Are we going to go back first meeting in June? We're going to be live or are we going to be? That's what we're talking about now. That's what he's referencing. Uh -huh. Trying to go live first meeting in June. Well, we'll be in person, hopefully. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would. It was, it, mm -hmm. Some weeks, we, I mean, we, we got a couple of weeks to talk about that. I, um, it wouldn't hurt me if uh, if we had an option. <laughs> you getting small? <laughs> well, no, no, it, it, it ain't that. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, you, you know, um, you know, they, they said that the, the chances now of, with all the reopening and everything, and mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we we talk about um, what three, two weeks from tomorrow, mm -hmm. two weeks from tomorrow. I, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. You, you know, we it, um, it ain't no big rush. I mean, uh, I hadn't seen Joey since Christmas. I, I like to see him. He is my buddy, but um, I, 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 I could wait until after the 4th of July. <laughs> I, my feelings were already hurt when we started today. Now, you're going to just add to yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that, that, was, I, I, uh, that was just an example, Joey. That was just an example. <laughs> Mm. All right, yeah, we're 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 working out. though. we're working out. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. All right, Chair Taylor, motion to adjourn. No move, no, Mr. Chairman. No move. That good. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Everybody else? Uh, Gary, Gary, uh, Gary, Gary, uh, Gary, Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going, y'all. Uh, all right. Uh, 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 thank you all very much. Thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right.